Jensen. <laughs> Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Bless, the, bless Greg and Jensen, but Lord, that their, their marriage would be a blessing unto you, Lord, that you would find joy in the two of them becoming one, Lord. Uh, and so, Jesus, we just pray, Lord, that uh, as uh, you know, I just, again, I am so honored that you chose me to be able to get to do this with you today. Uh, let's get started. Yeah? <laughs> All right, Jensen and Greg, the establishment of marriage is not the invention of man, but it's of our creator. Now in Genesis 2.18, God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper, helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. That's not going to happen to you right now. <laughs> uh, so then God took one of the ribs of Adam, and with it he formed a woman. Then the Lord brought the woman to Adam. Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. 
you know, the Bible also speaks of Jesus. He is the bridegroom, and that as the church, we're his bride. And so this ceremony today is also just um, a recognition of our relationship with, with God. So the love that you have for one another is the same as Jesus. The vows, the rings, the pouring of wine and prayer, each one is symbolizing and speaking to the realities of greater truths of needed support, uh, commitments, unity, and grace needed to develop this life of love together. And so to the family and friends that are here, you know, your part is a lot more than just sitting in these seats, uh, but you're here um, beyond this day to encourage Greg and Jensen and to be, uh, to come alongside them in their marriage, to just be here to support them and to not bug them. <laughs> and to the wedding party, the same for you, you know, like Greg and Jensen have chosen you to be up here with them. Uh, and it just speaks to that, that closeness that they desire with you and they have with you already uh, for you to speak into their lives and, uh, you know, to encourage them to grow in their love for one another. All right, so Jensen and Greg, uh, the vows and rings you exchange today are symbols of commitment. And commitment is the bond and the strength of life that will hold you two together. Uh, you know, the, the quality of love that you're committing yourselves to is described in, in God's word, as we all know. Love is patient and kind. It does not envy or boast. It is not proud. It is not rude or self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in truth. This type of love is not varying in degrees of emotion, but of choices, and that one by one uh, forge a bond of love with eternal qualities. So there's going to be times where you may not feel uh, the love for one another. <laughs> But you will, uh, it's, you know, remember this time that you've committed to one another that sometimes love is that choice that you have to make uh, to love one another. All right, so we can go ahead and join you. And, uh, in this love for one another, as, as I just read this to you too, uh, just keep this in mind to, that your desire is to be one and to be like-minded. It's from Philippians 2. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. And so what that's speaking to is the love that you're committing to is a selfless love. You know, again, it's, it's not out of feeling, but it's out of what does Greg need? What does Jensen need? And uh, so now I give this charge in the presence of the Almighty God and these witnesses. Do you, Greg, promise to fulfill your marriage vows and be committed to Jensen, to love and to cherish, care for and protect her in sickness and in health, prosperity and poverty as long as you both shall live i do and do you jensen uh, promise to fulfill your marriage vows and be committed to gray to love and to cherish care for and protect him in sickness and in health prosperity and poverty as long as you both shall live i do all right well since it is your desire to take each other as husband and his wife um, please repeat these vows after me and we'll start with you greg I, Greg, take thee, Jensen, to be my wedded wife. I, Greg, take thee, Jensen, to be my wedded wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law, and thereto, and thereto, I pledge you all of my faithfulness. I pledge you all of my faithfulness. All right, Jensen. I, Jensen, take thee, Greg, to be my wedded husband. I, Jensen, take thee, Greg, to be my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health sickness and in health to love and to cherish to love and to cherish till death do us part till death do us part according to god's holy law according to 
according to God's holy law. And there too. And there too. I pledge you all of my faithfulness. I pledge you all of my faithfulness. It's so sweet because in rehearsal, uh, you know, we it was like, hey, we gotta speak up a little bit, but <laughs> it's just it's just great to see you know, today. Um, I don't know how you guys are keeping the composure of not crying yet. <laughs> I was I personally was a mess when yeah. I thought already did. <laughs> All right, well, uh, you know, maybe moving forward, uh, Jensen and Greg, you both indicated that your desire to seal these vows is by giving and receiving of rings. So I could please have the rings. And now when, uh, when God, he made a covenant with Noah, he set his rainbow in the sky as a reminder of his promise and his faithfulness. Um, you know, you've, sect you've selected these rings to be a reminder of your commitment to one another. And they're made of gold, which symbolizes a love that does not tarnish, and an endless circle. It symbolizes your promise of an unbroken union. As you wear your ring, may it remind you of God's love for you and your love for each other. And so, Greg, we'll start with you. Greg is a symbol of your love for Jensen and a token of your loyalty to oh. her as your life's partner. Will you place this ring <laughs> on the wedding finger and repeat after me? With this ring, I give thee. With this ring, I give thee. In token and in pledge. In token and in pledge. Of our constant faith and abiding love. Of our constant faith and abiding love. With this ring. With this ring. I thee wed. I thee wed. <laughs> so Jensen, as a symbol of your love for Greg and a token of your loyalty to him as your life partner, will you place this ring on the <laughs> uh, on the wedding finger of Greg and his conductor? With this ring, <laughs> I give thee. With this ring, I give thee. In token and in pledge. In token and in pledge. Of our constant faith and abiding love. Of our constant faith and abiding love. You know, there's this awesome story in the Bible uh, that speaks of Jesus coming down and he, he kneels down and washes his disciples' feet. And, uh, you know, he does this to show to the church that he is committed to the church and his, his just great love for the church and then his humility that he is going to, I need to speak louder, so, <laughs> um, that in his humility, he's willing to come and to cleanse us. And so at this time, uh, Greg and Jensen have decided to uh, one more act of symbolism, uh, to serve one another and wash each other's hands, not their feet. Uh, you know, and uh, the disciples, you know, these, their feet would have been in sandals and they would have been walking through these dirt roads all day. So their feet would have been filthy. And if you guys see Greg and Jensen's hand right now, they kind of need some water. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that this act isn't just, just for this moment. It's a greater symbolism of what you two are going to commit to each other from this day forward. That you're willing to get into the You're willing to get into the struggles that hurt us. Frustrations, all that, because you've committed to one another. Just as Christ has committed himself to you. Um, this is just a symbol of um, hey, I'm, I'm wanting to go through life with you and be a part of your cleansing and all of that. Um, so at this time, we're going to take a moment, and I encourage you to please uh, pray over them as, as they take a moment just to be with one another. So please pray over them.
Ephesians 5.21, and it says, Submitting to one another in, fe in the fear of God, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, it doesn't just end with gentry. Um, it says, Husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present to her, to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Isn't that so good? <coughs> um, you know, I know a lot of times people take this passage and like, oh, wives, you gotta submit. <laughs> but then there's this, uh, you know, there's this part that for the husband to, hey, love the, love the bride as Christ has loved the church and he gave himself for her. And I know that's the love that you have for one another. You, you are here to serve one another. You are here to uh, just lay your life down because you want what's good for each other. You know, you want growth and you want life and all of that. And so, you know, let that be a reminder. Like he said, by washing of the water by the word, let the word just truly be the center of your guys' relationship. And I know that as you serve one another, that, um, you, know, you start to see this love that Jesus has for his church and that commitment that he has for the church that he has for the two of you. And so just know, like, in order to be a good husband, just love Jesus. In order to be a good wife, just love Jesus. And it's that simple that the love of God will pour out through you for one another. And the things that Greg needs, know that you can never amount to all those things. But the love of God within you, um, and thanks to you, Greg, you know, he will be sufficient for the two of you. And, and I know that Jesus, he said, you know, I've come to give you life, and that life abundantly. And so if you isn't at the center of your relationship that he, uh, you will see the fruit of his life in your marriage and in your relationship and in the people that you come across. All right. Well, now, as a minister of the gospel of, of the Lord Jesus Christ and as one by the state of the California, it is my honor to pronounce you husband and wife. Are you make kiss you bride?
and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Lorenzi. Thank <laughs> you. 